festival, we drove two hours to San Diego and just being in the car and hearing more of their story. And he showed me a lot of like YouTube videos during the drive of just like even families like escaping Afghanistan and shoving. He showed me a video. I think there were, if I'm not mistaken, eight people shoved in the back of a tiny car, um, like escaping Afghanistan mm-hmm. and just showing their bodies come out one by one out of this tiny trunk. Um, and it was really crazy to see that and he also showed some of what Afghanistan was before August and just showing like music videos um uh videos of that which was pretty cool so yeah that's really cool Mm -hmm. what about you guys Mm -hmm. I think my favorite moment I think it was just walking through the park with the family in Mm -hmm. the back like yeah it was just like really cool to see them I see them interact as, like, a father and the daughters, and just, yeah, to see that family bond between them, and also, like, it felt very symbolic to me for, like, the girls, like, going to the park, because it felt like, you know, a childhood thing that you do, mm-hmm. and just, like, knowing more of their story and a lot of, like, the difficult things that they had gone through, it was just, like, very symbolic for me, like, walking to the park, and, yeah, and just seeing, like, how much love there is in that family, mm-hmm. and, um, and how, like, bonded they are, it was just really really special to see and capture as a photographer. Mm. I would say my favorite moment would be after the playground when they were rolling around the grass. It was just Mm -hmm. like a childish, pure moment. Mm -hmm. And it was just funny because they would be rolling and then someone would run over and then it's just rolling over and over again, which Mm -hmm. leads me to my favorite photo. I think it kind of looks really like abstract and artistic, but most of the frame is the grass. And Mm -hmm. then we have... um, Aisha in like the very side of it eyes closed in like a dream like state mm-hmm. that would mm-hmm. probably be one of my favorite photos yeah. for our project yeah. so cool do you feel like that photo like what is it about their story that that photo expressed to you I think a huge part of their story and why they came to America is for their kids mm-hmm. and for their daughters because they're so young and they still maintain such a pure like childhood and innocence that they would not have been able to mm-hmm. I think if they stayed in Afghanistan. Mm. Mm. I think in contrast, my favorite photo is the one where there's the TV and then there's the bombing mm. on the TV and them sitting on the couch. Cause it, I think it really reminded me that yes, they are in the U.S. and yes, like things are much better here, mm. but just it like made me remember how much they've gone through before too, and that. It's still a part of their lives now, even though things are like somewhat mm. better now. Yeah. You can't get rid of like their past and mm. what they've gone through. So, mm. yeah, every time I look at that photo, I just I think it's like just a really powerful reminder. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah, I I want that photo to like almost to catch people off guard. You mm-hmm. know, like when they see it, it's just like whoa, what is that on the screen there? And why are they watching that? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that's yeah. an important image for me. Yeah. And I think Aisha looking at the screen at such a mm-hmm. young age is like just something that's like you really have to sit with and understand like this is their history and background and her parents aren't trying to hide her from their past yeah. or like what they've experienced. So it's pretty powerful mm-hmm. to see. Absolutely. Yeah. And going back to favorite moment, I thought of another. Um, I remember when we were sitting around the table and we were all eating food and we were like, talking we had danced around the topic of okay we'd been with them for like three hours and we had danced around the topic of like okay we might need to start heading home like the sun had set and then they were like okay we'll say our first goodbye now and then we'll say like five more goodbyes and then you guys can go (laughs) and I just love that moment of like the cultural just like wow we're gonna start saying goodbye now but then you guys will hang out for a while longer and then I remember in that same little chunk of time uh Zunab our translator had said um that like she had found like what was the term she used exactly you guys remember she had said that they were soul soul mates soul mates for each other but then she said something along the lines of like and we've become brothers and sisters or something like that it was like just really sweet to see like a quick bond between people and after all of our conversations that day so back to favorite moment really really special yeah yeah huge shout out to our interpreter oh yeah oh yeah that We're, leads me to my next question. Mm-hmm. What do you think our biggest struggle was for this project? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I think 
personally, my biggest struggle was it felt like we put a lot of, I put a lot of effort into making sure I was being as culturally sensitive as possible. And like, you know, trying to almost like to the point of overthinking, like, mm-hmm. should I say this? Should I dress this way? Da, 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 da. And like, out of this intention of wanting to respect them and do this project well. And then I think because we had some issues with our first interpreter, I think it was hard for me to be like, we just put in so much effort and we tried to do everything correctly. I was like overthinking everything and yet still there were some cultural misunderstandings that Mm -hmm. happened in our first meeting. And just to be like, okay, like cross-cultural journalism is really Mm -hmm. hard and it was hard for us even though we put in a lot of effort and intention into Mm -hmm. it. And I just remember like coming home that day and just being like, whew, like if this is what I'm supposed to do with my life, it's going to be really, really challenging, but really rewarding too. Mm. Yeah. 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 Mm. What about you guys? I think like capturing accurately their story because there's so much to it that, and I don't, I think if we were to sit with them for 50 more hours we'd continue to learn more and more so we spent a long period of time like getting to know them but I feel like there was so much more Mm -hmm. too so finding like words to articulate and the right images in the right order to kind of try to express what we were able to experience in in sitting with them for our viewer um, was like difficult to find the balance of I think because it's like yes there's so much hope being here in the U.S. but that like also At the same time, they just, the government stops giving refugees funds after three months. And, like, there's some realities that they're facing right now, too, that are, like, really, really difficult. Um, Not that they can't handle it. Not that they're not strong enough. They're absolutely strong enough. But there are some harsh realities right now. But it's also, like, if they were in Afghanistan right now, they're just unimaginable things that they would be facing. So they're grateful. But it's, like, hard to, it's really difficult I think we all struggled through like how to express this because yeah and even for me just learning about Afghanistan for I mean I didn't have too much context for Afghanistan prior to this project a little bit of research and stuff but nothing super extensive so like going into it I was just learning so much and felt like oh I I feel like I should write a dissertation on Afghanistan before Mm -hmm. I do this because I don't (laughs) want to screw anything up but it was like a really a challenging and and like really growing experience in that way too and oh man just getting to know them was so cool so yeah what about you i think i misunderstood the relationship between journalist and interpreter because we kind of just met our first interpreter like five seconds before he walked into the house mm-hmm. and while he was really great at like rephrasing um the way they said things and like informing us on things I felt like little cultural moments, we didn't get to learn as much. Like when we first met Zanab and we sat down at the dinner table, she accidentally, like, you guys accidentally bumped legs or something. She immediately went to shake your head. Mm-hmm. And do you remember what she said after? No, I don't. She said something like, oh, in Afghan culture, if we do, like, accidentally bump legs or something like that, like, we have to, like, ex- like exchange some type of music. Yes, yeah. yeah, I remember and that. And that was when I was just like, I have such a great feeling about this. Yeah. Even before we, like, solidify wanting, like, her as an interpreter and yeah. it's just little cultural things that I've learned through Zanab that were so yeah. like endearing and just like incredible would not have like come across my mind mm-hmm. yeah um, I think on our way back Afghan and Afghani and Afghan and Afghani <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Afghan. that was a huge learning <laughs> yeah so big Afghani is the currency and Afghan is the person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. easy thing <laughs> to yeah <laughs> I think the sweetest moments I understand from them it was like coming back from the park and the youngest one um Hermosa she like fell down and Sani would like tell her something in like their mm-hmm. language and we learned that it's actually like him saying like kill the bugs mm-hmm. so she doesn't think about like the pain of falling yeah, down and it's just like really sweet. amazing mm-hmm. yeah yeah I think for me like thinking about what I'm taking away from this project I think it's things like moments like that of like Yes, we went in as photojournalists taking photos, but it was so much more than the photos we were taking. It's about like the relationships we're making with the people, what we were learning from their culture too. Like mm-hmm. I just feel like this project was so rich because it was so much yeah. more than photos, you know? Mm-hmm. Like yes, Absolutely. we have this tangible magazine <laughs> that like has photos in it, but mm-hmm. more than that, I think these experiences are gonna shape how we now interact with other people in the future too. So. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Totally. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have anything else that you would 
think that you're taking away for the future? Mm-hmm. It's hard to I it, it's hard to take photos while you're listening to someone's mm-hmm. story. <laughs> it's yeah. so freaking hard. So I think like I want to grow in that abil- like to be able to kind of listen well and also take photos. It's such a balance that I barely have a grasp of. So I want to grow in that for sure in my next project. But yeah. I think it's getting to a point where you're comfortable with your subject. Because like if someone's yeah. crying, I would feel like so awkward just going like, let me just take a photo of you mm-hmm. real quick while you're sobbing. Yeah. It takes a lot of like trust and heart and like intention mm-hmm. to be able to like, capture like moments like that. Mm-hmm. And that's something I really want to learn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Good talk. Good talk. Good talk. Good talk. Good talk. Good talk. Good talk.